And what's up there, Facebook? Prophet David Taylor here for your weekly prophetic test one two. Okay. All right. So I'm rebuking that bad connection right now in Jesus' name. We're claiming a good connection so we don't get interrupted. All right. Hope everybody's doing well. Uh, we're going to dive into the prophetic word for this week, and I'm super excited about it. Um, because as always, <clears throat> the Holy Ghost is, you know, showing us some new stuff, and I'm, I'm just super pumped about it. So let's pray, and we're going to dive right in. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to come before you. Uh, by faith, thank you that we're justified by faith because of Jesus, Father. We can't thank you enough for Jesus, and we're going to spend all of eternity magnifying and glorifying your name with a glad heart because of Jesus, Lord. So we just want to thank you for Jesus, Lord. So I ask you to be in the midst of this broadcast. I surrender to your God. I surrender my mind, my heart, my brain, my gestures, my, my every thought to your God, to the filling of the Holy Ghost. Speak through me, O God, and let your will be done. And I thank you for the honor and the privilege to be used by you to be a part of your kingdom. And we give you the glory in all things. Uh, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen, amen. All right. <clears throat> Today's prophetic word is rewards. There we go. I, I don't know why I froze, but I'm back. So uh, we're going to be talking about reward. This thing keeps going in and out. Uh, yeah, no, in the name of Jesus, I command you to stay in. So stop dropping out. Okay. All right, so I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to do it a little bit differently today. Normally, I give you one scripture and we exegete it. And we prophetically preach and teach and exegete. Well, today, I'm going to give you a bunch of different scriptures and then I'm going to go back. Uh, so we're going to uh, have, there's a lot of stuff to do. So you're probably going to want to watch the video several times so you can write the scriptures down. You know, you can take notes. While I'm talking about it, or you can go back and rewatch. So please like and share this video because whenever the Spirit of God releases a prophetic word, we want to be sure that gets to as many people as possible. Because remember, God gives us apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers to minister the word to us, to help us hear from God, to help us hear what thus saith the Lord for that day, that week, that season. So whenever a prophetic word is going forth, then again, you want to be sure as many people as possible can hear it, okay? So again, today's prophetic word is rewards, rewards, okay? So we're going to start with Hebrews 11.6. Hebrews 11.6, and I'm going to read out of the King James. Hebrews 11.6 says, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And we'll come back to that one, okay? Let's look at Jeremiah 31, 16. Jeremiah, Old Testament prophet, major prophet. Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 16. The NIV says, This is what the Lord says, Restrain your voice from weeping and your eyes from tears, for your work will be rewarded, declares the Lord. They will return from the land of the enemy. Mm. Some good stuff there. Now we're going to look at Psalm 62, 12. Psalm chapter 62, verse 12. Psalms is right in the middle of the Bible. Psalm 62, 12 says, Also unto thee, O Lord, belongeth mercy, for thou renderest to every man according to his work. Mm. Now we're going to move on over. I'm going to go back over some of these. Don't worry. Uh, Proverbs eleven eighteen. Proverbs, which is right after the book of Psalms, Proverbs chapter 11, verse 18, reading the NIV. A wicked person earns deceptive wages, but the one who sows righteousness reaps a sure reward. Okay, we're going to look at two more, then I'm going to go back. 1 Corinthians 3 8. 1 Corinthians is in the New Testament. It's one of the Pauline epistles. It's one of the letters that Paul wrote to the church at Corinth as a city. That's why it's called Corinthians. Okay? So that's not some strange name that just came out of nowhere. That was actually the name of a city in Paul's day. Okay? So 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 8. Now he who plants and he who waters are one. 
and each one will receive his own reward according to his own labor. Wow. Okay, and here's the last one we're going to read. Now there's more, there's, you know, there's at least twice as many more scriptures about rewards than I'm reading today. Okay, I'm just giving you about six or seven. I'm giving you uh, six. Okay, and here's the last one we're going to read for now. Ruth, the book of Ruth. Ruth is in the Old Testament. Okay, Ruth chapter 2, verse 12. Ruth chapter 2, verse 12. May the Lord repay you for what you have done. May you be richly rewarded by the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to take refuge. Okay? So now we're going to go back. But before I do that, I want to say that I want you to get the theme. I want you to get the idea. Because I have discovered you have to hear the word of God over and 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 over every day for the rest of your life. You have to retrain your mind and retrain your spirit to think like God thinks. And you'd be surprised what's in there now. <laughs> you'd be surprised the kind of thoughts, see, because you never really forget anything. That's the power of the human mind. It's the most amazing computer ever invented, invented by God, is the human brain. You never forget anything. Because when you have an experience, what happens in your brain, your brain forms little kernels, okay, on the surface of your brain that house the information. And all that is not in your conscious mind because then you'd go crazy. But that goes back to live in your subconscious mind. How do I know that you never forget anything? Because all you have to do is be somewhere minding your own business and you hear a song or you smell a smell or you walk down a street or you will see an, an advertisement on the bus or you see something up on a big marquee and it will take you back somewhere else. Think about it. Think about how many times you've heard a song and it took you to uh, a place where that song has some significance in your life. Think about when you smell a smell, you smell some perfume and it smells like mama and them. That smells like mama's perfume, perfume and it takes you back. Think about when you've been somewhere and you saw something coming across on a bus or you saw something up on a marquee and you're like, wow, and I remember, you know, because you never forget anything. <laughs> It's just that you can't hold everything in your conscious memory because that would drive you crazy. That's why you have a subconscious memory. Memory, But it's all in there. But the point I'm trying to make is that our challenge from God, our commandment, yea, even our commandment from God in life is to reprogram this. Is to get out of here everything that's not like God and not from God and reprogram it with what thus saith the Lord. And that is a lifetime effort. That is not something you're doing no weekend. You got saved on Friday and you completely uh, renewed your mind on Monday. It doesn't work that way. It's every day until you die. And you've got to hear the word of God. That's why God calls uh, anybody that speaks the word because there, there are those that he calls to sing the word. Mistress and psalmists, but there are those he calls to speak the word. Those that preach, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, and those that teach. Because you've got to hear the word. And you've got to hear it over and over and over and over again because you have to reprogram this. Okay? So I said all that to say that whatever it is you thought about God in your life up to this point, we're going to have to throw that out. And we're going to have to listen to what it is that God actually says. Because I personally know some people who think they're working and working and working and nothing's ever going to change. They think they're working and working and working and nothing's ever going to get better. They think they're working and working and working because that's just what you're supposed to do and that's the end of it. That's not what the Bible says. Oh, I feel a prophetic word coming too, so I'll, I'll give that in a minute. Uh, the prophetic word about, about rewards, okay? But that's not what the Bible says. And remember how I told you on No More Genies because remember the second Thursday of every month, I teach uh, my series called No More Genies, where we get away from our genie concept of God and we, we renew our minds with the truth about what the scripture says. But what I'm teaching about right now is Jesus' true message, which was the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven. Okay? And he tells us what kind of place the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven is. But you will discover so much of that you never heard in church. And so much of it is so different from the way we do church. 
So that's why we need to study the word. And I'm saying all that to say that you got to get it in your head that God is going to reward you, <laughs> that you're not just serving God for nothing, okay? You're not just serving God for nothing. You're not wasting your time because I know some, sometimes it feels that way. Sometimes you have to ask yourself, you know, do I really need to go to church today? Do I really want to go to church today? What's the point? I'm tired. What, you know, what's the point? Uh, do I really want to spend time with devotion today? Do I really want to get in the Word today? I know I should, but what's the point? The point is because there's a reward, but you need to believe that, you need to know that so that you can start confessing it and so you can start expecting it, okay? So having said all that, let's look at those scriptures again. So we're going to start with Hebrews 11, 6, that's the first one I read. Uh, uh, let me read the Berean Study Bible. And without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who approaches him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. In the King James, I like the word there better. It says he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Okay? So it says that when you are dealing with God, your whole approach to God, first of all, you've got to believe that the Lord exists. But second of all, you've got to believe that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. What does it mean to seek God diligently? It means with faithfulness. You know, we have that phrase, your due diligence. It means you do all the research you need to do before you, you plan on doing something. It means to, to show up every day. It means to show up in the house of God. It means to be faithful in seeking God's face. It means to be faithful in talking to the Lord. It means to be faithful in your service to God. And he says, if you do that, he's going to reward you. And that's what a lot of people are missing in their theology. Because they're just not happy. Because they're not walking in the full reward of God. Because they don't believe it. Okay? Because maybe you haven't heard that in church. Maybe what you've heard in your religious background is that, you know, you're supposed to do all this stuff because you're a Christian. So you're supposed to come to the house of God, which is true. You're supposed to pay your tithes. You're supposed to worship all of it, which is true. But there's a reward when you do it. Okay? God will show you things in the Spirit that you haven't seen before. God, excuse me, God will tell you stuff before it happens. God will show you things that haven't come to pass yet. God will warn you against certain situations or certain people. God will even warn you about the way you take the work. God will tell you, don't get on the train today. Don't get on that train or wait for the next train. Go to, don't go down that street. Walk around the block. Don't turn here. Go, you know, uh, two more miles and turn there. God will even do stuff like that because there's a reward for seeking him. So you've got to believe that God is and he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. But also the word there is diligent. That means you can't be a CME. You can't be Christmas, Mother's Day, and Easter. <laughs> you can't come to church three times a year and think that you're going to get the reward of God because that is not diligently or earnestly seeking him. And when you look at that word, earnestly, okay, earnestly, what does that mean? That means you have to be sincere in your heart. You can't be phony. You can't be doing it for a form and fashion. Then you get the rewards of the Lord when you're earnest, when you're diligent, when you're faithful, okay? Jeremiah thirty-one sixteen. Now, they're in captivity here, they meaning the children of Israel. But it says, this is what the Lord says, I'm reading the NIV, Restrain your voice from weeping and your eyes from tears, for your work will be rewarded, declares the Lord. They will return from the land of the enemy. That verse is power-packed. What did that verse say? That verse says is that you don't even have to weep and cry because your work is going to be rewarded. Haven't you ever had those times in your life where you're just bawling? You're just bawling in tears because you have to ask yourself, is this all there is? Is this, what am I doing this for? Okay, I know you're going to have them days if you go to school because I certainly had them days working on uh, this last degree I had because sometimes when you're going to college, community college, tech school, two-year, associates, university, it gets rough in the middle. <laughs> It gets rough in the middle of an academic career, and you've got to find a reason to keep pressing on to go ahead on and finish that degree. But God says here is that you don't even have to weep and cry. 
worrying about whether or not you're going to get compensated because he says your work will be rewarded. Then he says they will return from the land of the enemy. That means that if you're in captivity now, God's going to bring you out. That's a promise. What does that look like practically in real life? How do we apply that? That means if you're in debt, Okay, debt is from the enemy. Being so in debt that you don't have any financial choices and your credit's all messed up and you can't do what you want to do, that's the devil. So even if you got yourself in debt, if you listen to the Lord and you seek the Lord, God will bring you out of, out of debt. He'll help you return from that land. The land of the enemy might be a bad childhood because a bad childhood can scar you for life. God is saying that he'll bring you out of them bad childhood memories. He'll bring you out of them bad childhood situations. Okay? So, again, the idea here is not to get discouraged in your seeking of God. To not feel like, well, I can just drop church and it won't make any difference. Or it doesn't make any difference if I have my prayer time. Or it doesn't make any difference if I get in the Word. That's not true. There's a reward coming when you do that on the faithful. And God says here, you don't even have to cry because there's been some times where we cried our eyes out. The Lord said, you don't even have to do that. Because your work is going to be rewarded and you're going to return from the land of the enemy. Okay? Same thing is true if you have a bad work situation. God, see, now my pastor's preaching about this right now. My pastor's preaching about how God is a God of good things. You don't have to stay in a bad work situation. If you're in a bad work situation, it's a grief to you. And every time you think about going to work, it just makes you tired. God had never meant for you to work like that. God has never meant for your professional life, for your career to be like that. God meant for you to work in a promised land situation, meaning that you're going to sow and you're going to reap and you're going to get a return and all of your labor is going to have a payoff. Working, working, working with no payoff is from the devil. That's not God. So God said, I'll bring you out of a situation where it looks like you're just working, working, working and you don't have nothing to show for it. That's not from God. Okay? Let's move on to Psalm 62 and 12. Uh, also unto thee, O Lord, belong in mercy. For thou renderest to every man according to his work. There it is again. For thou renderest, or, or you give. That's King James Version. So that's Old English. Let me pull up the, uh, where do I have it here? Let's pull up the NIV. NIV says, and with you, Lord, is unfailing love. And you reward everyone according to what they have done. There it is again. Now, why is that so important? Because it's a promise from God. Don't you know sometimes you can so love and so love and so love and give out and give out and give out and then it look like anybody giving back to you? <laughs> it's not funny. I'm just laughing because I've been there. Haven't you ever been in a situation like that where it looks like, looks like the, the, the better you treat them, the more love you give, the worse they treat you? But God says... He rewards everyone according to what they have done. That's one of the reasons the Bible tells us to love our enemies. God is not telling us to love our enemies because the way they're treating us is okay. God is telling us to love our enemies because that means we're sowing love. That means we have to reap it. When you stay in control of the seeds that you sow, then you get to determine what kind of harvest is coming back to you. So what it says here is that you reward everyone according to what they have done. And it's come to my mind right now that somebody needs to hear that about their marriage. If you want a good marriage, you're going to have to sow into it. You don't get no good marriage in no weekend. Ooh. I wish I could turn that into a plaque and just, just put that all over, uh, uh, you know, the justice of the peace and the, the, the churches where people get married. You don't get no good marriage in no weekend. You're going to have to sow. And it can be mighty discouraging. The same thing is true with being a parent. It can be mighty discouraging because it's going to take you a minimum of 16 years and maybe around 20, maybe 25 years to grow you an adult. you got to take that little infant baby. It's going to take you a minimum of 16 years, a decade and a half plus one more year at least. And then maybe about 20, 21, 22, 25 to take that little baby and turn them into a functioning human being that can take care of themselves. You're going to have to give and give and give and give and give as a parent. But he says that he reward everyone according to what they have done. There's going to be a reward for all that sowing you've been doing. You see that? It's a promise from God. That means it has to happen. That's what I've been trying to get to. 
is a promise from God, that means it has to happen. Because I can tell, as the Holy Spirit gave this to me, that some people out there listening to me are discouraged. You're discouraged because you've been asking yourself, is there any end to this? Is, is this all my life is? And the answer to that question is, there's promises. That's why I'm reading you six different scriptures. There's promises from God that you will get rewarded for what you're doing. Let's move on to Proverbs 11 and 18. Proverbs 11 18 says, <clears throat> A wicked person earns deceptive wages, Ooh. but the one who sows righteousness reaps a sure reward. There it is again. Let me read that again. Proverbs 11 18, A wicked person earns de deceptive wages, but the one who sows righteousness reaps a sure reward. That means no matter what, how much wickedness is going on, going on around you, and no matter how, uh, what kind of attitude other people might have towards you, he says that if you are choosing to sow righteousness, there's going to be a sure reward to you. That means keep on showing up on your job on time. Everybody else might come in late, but you show up on time. Keep on doing your job with a smile. Everybody else might have an attitude if you do your job with a smile. Okay? Keep on paying your tithes and giving your offerings to the house of God. And if you keep on sowing righteousness, the Lord says there's a sure reward. Okay? Let's move on to 1 Corinthians 3 and, 3 and 8. <clears throat> 1 Corinthians 3 and 8. And we're going to read the NIV. The one who plants and the one who waters have one purpose, and they will each be rewarded according to their own labor. There it is again. There it is again. There's a reward coming according to your own labor. Now here, it's talking about that famous verse that uh, we plant and we water, but God is the one who gives the increase. That's 1 Corinthians uh, 3, 7. That he who plants is nothing, he who waters is nothing, but God gives the increase. So it's talking about how we have to plant and we have to water to give God something to work with because you always have to give the Holy Ghost something to work with. And let me throw that in while I'm talking about this. Don't be one of those believers who thinks that you don't have to do anything. That you can just sit back and that all the blessings are just going to fall out the sky. God's just going to rain men on you. That's incorrect. You've got to uh, plant and you've got to water. But then God gives the increase. But you always have to give the Holy Ghost something to work with. Okay? If you have a patch of grass or a backyard or a lawn or any place like that where you live, you can go in that backyard, you can go to that grass, you can go to that dirt, and you can lean over to that dirt and you can say, give me some tomatoes. What's the ground going to do? The ground's just going to smile at you and say, don't bring me your need, bring me some seed. Okay? You can yell, give me some tomatoes all you want to. People be walking by your house talking about, I didn't in backyard yelling at the ground. You can yell at the ground for three years every day. The ground just going to smile at you because you've got to plant some seed <laughs> and you got to water that seed. So always remember, even though we're talking about rewards, you got to give the Holy Ghost something to work with. Okay? <clears throat> you have to actually go to church. You have to actually spend time in the presence of the Lord. You actually have to pay your tithes. You actually have to confess. You've got to give God something to work with. But when you do, when you keep planting and you keep watering and you keep sowing, then the Bible says you're going to get rewarded according to your own labor. And I'm also going to borrow a phrase from my pastor because when my pastor said this, it blessed me so. You know how sometimes your pastor or your apostle, your prophet, they can say something and it just kind of resonates inside you and stays with you? Well, my pastor said something several months ago that has just resonated inside of me and blessed my very soul. He said this right here. He said, don't let people make you feel bad about your harvest. And then he said, you know why? Because they didn't pray like you did. They didn't fast like you did. They didn't cast out demons like you did. They didn't sow and give like you did. They didn't believe God like you did. They confessed like you did. They didn't come to church like you did. So don't let people make you feel bad about your harvest. See, that just blessed my soul. That blessed me way down on the inside somewhere. Okay? And so I just want to throw that out to those of you that are listening to me right now. That when your harvest comes, don't let people make you feel bad about it. 
Don't let people make you feel bad because you, if you worked, you have planted and watered and sown and fasted and prayed and confessed and believed and denied yourself and taken up your cross and given up some sleep and done things when you didn't feel like doing them. Okay? It's not like you were just sitting around doing nothing. Okay? All right. And then we're going to look again at Ruth 2 and 12. Ruth 2.12, out of the NIV, May the Lord repay you for what you have done. May you be richly rewarded by the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to take refuge. And when it's talking about may the Lord repay you for what you have done, you have to read the entire context of the book of Ruth. What that's basically talking about is uh, when Ruth came back with Naomi, her mother-in-law, she took care of her and she treated her well. And everybody in town, Ruth really developed a really good reputation. Everybody knew who Ruth was because Ruth was from Moab. But when she came back with Naomi, she took care of Naomi. Naomi took care of her too. And so this is speaking a blessing on Ruth about how she treated her mother-in-law so well. That's where that comes from. Okay? So it says, May you be richly rewarded by the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to take refuge. Okay, so there it is, it is again, a promise of God that when you do right by God and when you do right by people, that God himself is going to repay you. Okay, so let me release that, release that prophetic word. For behold, my children, the days come and now are where I begin to give you handfuls. I begin to open the floodgates. I begin to give you a river, an ocean. I begin to give you a tidal wave of blessing to repay you for the work that you've done, to reward you for how you have sought me and believed me and spoken my word. So get ready. Open your mouth wide, open your hands wide, and open your heart wide, for I do flood your life with rewards for all that you have sown into my kingdom, and ye shall know that I am a God that rewards those that diligently seek me, says the Spirit of the living God. Amen and amen. Okay, so you know what that means? That means that it's time to reap. It's harvest time. And God's going to do exactly what he said, that your life is about to get flooded with rewards. Now, I'm not going to give you all the details, but I'll just say this little bit right here. I got some of that today. I'm not going to go into detail. I'm just going to say... <laughs> I got some of that flood today, and it was a good thing. It was beautiful. So the point, because remember, I always tell you that I'm not teaching or preaching or prophesying anything that I'm not living myself, okay? So God is saying that, that the floodgates are open. Now, I saw that in the Spirit while I was saying it. While the Spirit of God was giving it, giving it to me, I saw that in the Spirit. And what that means is that it's happening as you say it. So what do you do? How do you prepare to receive a floodgate or a river of blessings from God? Here's what you do. The first thing you have to do is believe it. Because if you don't, when God gives you a prophetic word, if you don't believe it, that means literally the blessings will be all around you and you'll miss them because you don't believe it. Because you ain't looking for them. So number one, you have to believe it. Number two, the next thing you have to do is you have to say it. You have to confess it every day that the floodgates of heaven are open to me and that the reward of the Lord is upon me. I'll say that again. The floodgates of heaven are open to me and the reward of the Lord is upon me. You got to say that. You got to say that every day. Say it three times a day. Say it five times a day. Say it seven times a day. You got to say it. So number one, you got to believe it. Number two, you got to confess it. Okay. Number three, you have to look for it uh, in different areas of your life. OK, um, now, wherever the Lord comes, wherever the Lord shows up, praise God for wherever he comes and wherever he shows up. But you have to look for it. OK, what do I mean? I mean, you can expect bonuses. You can expect to meet some new people with some new, new opportunities. You can expect new doors to open. You can expect people to walk up to you that have never talked to you before. that want to do business with you. You can expect a change of attitude or a change of heart and maybe people that have been hard-hearted and stubborn for a long time. You can expect uh, new ideas to come. You can expect a quick turnaround because the floodgates are open. 
Okay, floodgates are open. You can expect phone calls from people that haven't been in your life in years and they called you to bless you. I just wanted to call you and say there's a convention this weekend in town and I'm going to buy you a ticket. You don't even have to worry. I'm going to pay your way because I just felt like I wanted to bless you and I wanted you to go. Stuff like that. And I'm just, you know, it can be, it can come any kind of way. But the point I'm trying to make is that you got to prepare for that. Because it takes more energy to, to harvest than it does anything else. Did you know that? That's why the Lord says we have to pray and ask him to send laborers into the harvest. Because the harvest is white, but the laborers are few. It takes more energy to harvest. It really does. If you've never gone through a harvest, you may not know what I'm talking about. But maybe this is your first one. So like Bishop Jake says, get ready, get ready, get ready. Because when, when the Lord said the floodgates are open, the floodgates, that means all those blessings are right now as I'm talking. I'm not talking about five minutes from now. I'm talking about right now. Right now as I'm talking, those blessings are being poured into your life. It's going to take more energy to harvest than it does anything else. You think you worked hard to sow. You think you worked hard to plant. You think you worked hard to water. When it's time to start catching all the fruit and, and the plants spring up and all that, oh, just ask any farmer. Ask any farmer. When you see the farmer out there and they're planting them seeds and they're on the tractor and they're working the ground, that's one thing. But when them, when them stalks and corn stalks spring up, when the, them tomato plants spring up, it takes more work to harvest and gather in than it does anything else, any other part of the process. You see what I mean? And so that's what, and I've already been experiencing it this whole week. I wish I could tell you, I wish I could tell you the details. I've already been experiencing exactly what I'm telling you. That's what I'm saying. It's happening. It's always right now. It's not next week. It's right now. It's already happening. Okay? So that's what I mean when I say you've got to get ready. Uh, let me give you some more practical suggestions. The Lord might wake you up earlier than you're used to getting up because he's got something he needs to tell you for the day. Like he might tell you where a sale is. He might press upon you and say, go to this store today. And it just won't leave you. It'll just keep coming back to you. Just keep dropping your spirit. Keep dropping in your spirit. Because God is trying to get you somewhere to meet some people. And or God is trying to get you somewhere to buy something that you've been wanting to buy for a long time that's on sale. And save you a ton of money. A boatload of money. Okay? Or God might be taking you somewhere where you get a ground floor opportunity. Do you know what a ground floor opportunity is? It would be like if you were in the garage with Steve Jobs when he built his first Apple computer. If you were in the room with Bill Gates when he, burnt, when he built his first Windows machine. If y'all was working together, that's what ground floor means. If you had worked uh, for Oprah when she first came to Chicago from Baltimore and you got in when she was first getting started, that's what ground floor means. That when something is just something that one day in the future is going to blow all the way up here, but you got a chance to get in on it before it became all that. That's another way I've discovered people miss their blessing from God because they keep looking for a finished product all the time. Sometimes you get a finished product, but sometimes the harvest is giving you a ground floor opportunity. It's giving you a chance to get in on something before it blows up and becomes really big. Because once it comes up here, then everybody's going to be trying to get in on it then. I've discovered there's a whole lot of people. Some people even missed their spouses that way. That's why I talk about that so much. What do you mean, Mr. Spouses? And can you give me an example in the Bible of what you're talking about? Yes, I can. Uh, I'll start with the example in the Bible first. The example in the Bible is Jesus, uh, the son of the living God, the second person of the Trinity, the son of God became Jesus, the Christ. Christ is not Jesus' last name. Okay? The name Jesus means God saves. Christ means uh, anointed one or Messiah. So God saves through the Messiah. God saves through the anointed one. Okay? The Son of God, the second person of the Trinity, became Jesus Christ when he became incarnated as a man. Don't you know there were people who walked the earth and saw Jesus as a man and they missed him? They didn't know that was God in the flesh. They completely missed their chance because that's only going to happen once in all creation where God turned himself into a man and came through the womb of a woman. And was born like we are and became like us. That only happened one time in all of time and eternity. There were people that looked right at Jesus and didn't know who he was. And then there's Judas Iscariot. Someone that was chosen to be one of the twelve. One of the twelve that walked with Christ. Let that sink in for a minute. 
There are plenty of apostles and plenty of prophets, okay, both before Jesus and after. But there were only those 12 men that got chosen to be a part of his circle that got to see the Lord, the Lord every day, got to go with him every way, and got to see Jesus live, got to see him multiply the food and raise Lazarus from the dead and all the stuff Jesus did. They saw it right here. They weren't reading about it in the Bible. They were actually watching Jesus do it. And Judas still sold him out. Judas, it's not funny. Judas still betrayed him to get him crucified because Judas did not recognize the opportunity he had. If you ever wondered why, it's because they thought Jesus was going to come in and kill all the Romans and restore Israel to power. But that's not what the Lord was doing. He was fighting the game on a different level. And there are a lot of people that look right at Jesus and missed him because they were looking for something else. It didn't look like what they thought. Uh, how can I relate that to spouses? There are a lot of people that have walked right by the person they were supposed to marry. Do you know why? Because you were looking for a finished product. <laughs> Sometimes God has you meet people before they become who they are to give you time to build a relationship with them so that when they blow up, y'all are already good. Because when they blow up, everybody's going to be in their face then. But I know some people personally <laughs> It's not funny. They have walked past people that God tried to send in their life because they, they kept looking for the finished product, not understanding that God was trying to give you a chance to get in on the ground floor before they got all up here because once they get all up there, everybody going to be in their face then. Can you see that? That's why it's so important to be kind to people. That's why it's so important to be nice to people because you may not know who you're talking to. I've had people come back in my life from years in the past. One time, uh, we was at a restaurant. When I say we, I mean me and a bunch of my friends. This was about 10 years ago. And uh, we were at Baker Square. And this young man came up to me and he said, Hey, preacher man. Hey, preacher man. And I was like, uh, hey. He said, you don't remember me, do you? I said, no. No, no, I don't. He said, you witnessed to me a couple years ago as a teen uh, to lead me to Christ. And I was like... Oh, this dude is my waiter. I didn't even recognize him. You see what I mean? But them seeds you planted and them seeds you sow. Sometimes it's years later and people come back in your life and they say, I just want to thank you. I had a friend of mine tell me a couple weeks ago that there's a prophetic word that I gave to a friend of theirs. And that word came to pass like that. And they moved so quickly into what God said was going to happen. It was like maybe a week or two turnaround, to turnaround time and it was doing like that. And she said she just wanted to let me know that she was blessed by that word because God told her to get ready because it happened. And it happened just like I said it was going to happen. So the point I'm trying to make is that it's time to open up your heart, open up your mind. It's time to believe it. It's time to confess it. But it's time to get ready for it. And it may come in a bunch of different forms. And it may be all that. It might be money and business opportunities and networking and new people, and people from your past, and strangers, and ideas, and ground floor. It might be all that, okay? But all I know is it's here right now. And if I don't know anything about the prophetic, I know this. I know you've got to move when the Lord tells you to move. And if the Lord says it's happening right now, then don't even go to bed tonight without looking for new opportunities, without looking for new doors, new uh, harvest to come into your life. And if you harden your heart and you close your mind and say, oh, Prophet Taylor, you don't know what you're talking about, then you're going to miss it. And you don't be complaining. Don't be complaining because I am not going to feel bad about my blessings. Don't be complaining when 30 days from now, when you realize you had an opportunity in August and you heard the prophetic word and you didn't take it seriously. Okay? So if I know anything about the prophetic, I know that you've got to move when the Lord says move. You got to move when the Lord says move, okay? So I'm excited about everything I just said. It's already happening in my life, and I'm excited, okay? Because I tell you all the time, I'm not preaching or teaching or prophesying anything that I'm not living myself, okay? All right. If you have any prayer requests, put them on the screen. Uh, the next portion is I'm going to go in the Spirit. I'm going to ask the Holy Ghost if there's any finan more financial words. If there's deliverance needed, if there's a need for physical healing, 
And if there's any more prophetic utterances he wants me to release. So when you see me close my eyes and pray in tongues, that's what I'm doing. Okay? Uh, put your prayer requests on the screen. If, because uh, uh, I can't always see everything that scrolls. But put your prayer requests on the screen. And um, if I don't see it, then I will pray for it after I get done ministering. Uh, if I don't pray for it now. Okay? All right. Okay. Okay, I'm going to do what Holy Ghost is telling me to do. Holy Ghost is telling me to tell somebody, tell y'all out there, whoever this applies to, put your hand on your head and say, God, anoint my mind with ideas. I'll say it again. God, anoint my mind with ideas. That's the word for somebody looking at me right now. I'll say it a third time. God, anoint my mind with ideas. In the name of Jesus, amen. Okay, that same word came back to me. Now that's significant. The word that came back to me was flood water. Flood water. Now let me tell you why that's significant. Because whenever God repeats something, if the Lord ever repeats something, he's trying to tell you how important it is. Like when you see stuff repeated in the Bible, he's trying to call your attention to pay attention to this. Yea and verily means amen, amen, or truly, truly. You heard Jesus say that a lot. If you read when Jesus would talk, he would say truly, truly, or verily, verily. Okay? So the Lord just again dropped that word in my spirit. I saw it just like I'm looking at my screen. He said, flood water. So that means that the flood water of heaven is upon us right now. So all that stuff I just talked about before, all, you got to get ready. Get ready. Uh, like my pastor uh, said, uh, let me see, earlier this year, my pastor said that uh, somebody sowed some seed into Crusaders, and in maybe less than 30 days, they had half a million dollars in their account. You know how? Because somebody had taken some music that they had written, used it in a movie, and they got licensing fees and they got a royalty check. 500 grand. Not $500, not $5,000, $500,000. Half a million dollars in less than 30 days because somebody used a song they wrote a long time ago and it produced a huge check. So you never know. But whenever God says it's that kind of time, you have to start expecting stuff like that to happen. Okay? Okay, I think that's it. So God bless you. I'm so excited. This, this broadcast today was a blessing to my soul. I'm, I'm claiming all these reward scriptures. I'm already living. It's already manifesting. And I'm just excited. So I'm excited for me and I'm excited for you. And for those that want to believe God and receive this flood water, just the next couple of days, the next couple of weeks, the next 30 days of your life is going to blow your mind. It's going to blow your mind what God is going to do. So I'm super excited. Okay. All right. So I will see you the same time next Sunday um, at 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. And then remember, I'll be on the second Thursday of September for my next No More Genies broadcast. Okay, 7 p.m. on the second Thursday is when I do No More Genies, and I'll be on at this same time next Sunday at 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. All right? Amen. God bless. And remember, floodgates, floodwaters from heaven are open to us right now because it's time to receive our rewards from Jesus. Amen and amen.